Next up is Torbjörn Garke from Synod Forum. Welcome. Thank you very much, and thank you very much uh, to uh, to Biostock for inviting us for this uh, this spring summit in life science. So I'm Torbjörn Garke. I'm the CEO uh, of uh, Synod Pharma. And uh, what I'm going to talk t- about today is what is important for Synact Pharma during this year. And as many of you know, we are focused on treating inflammatory diseases with a totally new concept of therapy, that is resolution therapy. And I will come back to that as well. So, just some forward-looking statements. And then let's just take a little bit uh, view on what happened in uh, in uh, uh, 22 which was quite an uh, important year for us and uh, obviously the uh, uplisting uh, from actually to 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 Nasdaq uh, Stockholm main market in the mid cap section was important for us and thank you to uh, to Patrick Renwall the our CFO for that it was really important for us in order to capture more uh, more investors uh, and then importantly also was the uh, okay from the American authorities, FDA, for us to start clinical development in the US. This is a, a really a quality statement uh, uh, on our program. So and thank you very much for uh, to Thomas Thomas and uh, Meta and uh, the others in the R&D uh, uh, department for that. Importantly also was the initiation of the ongoing clinical trials in RA as well as in, in the, the kidney space. Uh, what I will focus on today is really what's going on in the RA field. So let's uh, move on to that. But first of all, I just want to give you a snapshot of the pipeline. This is obviously the value of, uh, of Synac Pharma, all the different product opportunities within both large indication areas, but also some more uh, more uh, more narrow indication areas. And that is what is a, a good quality sample of a good uh, pipeline. So as you can see here in the the first uh, first uh, two columns is all about the uh, rheumatoid arthritis uh, in two different patient populations. I'll get back to that. And then the uh, nephrotic uh, syndrome. In addition to the virus-induced uh, respiratory in- insufficiency, uh, that is this, our second uh, proof of concept that our uh, lead molecule, AP1189, works in inflammation. As some of you might remember, we got really good results from the COVID-19-induced uh, pulmonary inflammation, and in addition to, to the RA. Um, and then following the acquisition of uh, GXP Pharma, um, uh, earlier uh, this year, we are adding on some really exciting opportunities in in other spaces as well. And one of them is the prevention of organ failure in complicated surgery. So I would say a very good pipeline. So it's all about inflammatory diseases. And when you have an inflammation and you cannot deal with the inflammation, it can be chronic, become chronic. It's a evil uh, way of the inflammatory response to just accelerate. Uh, it's important for us to, to, to stop that uh, building up into a cl- chronic inflammation. And our compound 1189 works in two different ways. One is to slow down the, uh, uh, the inflammatory response by inhibiting some of the uh, uh, different uh, uh, mediators and cells that are important in the inflammatory response. That's one thing. And the other thing is to clean up the mess. So uh, the compound also stimulates the so-called, I call them trash cells. These are the cells that are cleaning up the, uh, the debris from the inflammation. By doing those two things at the same time, we believe you can rebalance the immune system. You're not inhibiting one substance that many of the treatments in RA does. Uh, and causing uh, immune uh, depression. Uh, what we are doing is rebalancing. It's a, we believe it's a much more intelligent way of stopping the inflammation. Uh, why rheumatoid arthritis? I, I often get that question. It's a very, very big area. It's about 1% of 
of the whole population in the world. And about 70-80% of those that suffers are women. The reason is, yes, it's big. However, more importantly, it's a big medical need. Even with uh, quite a lot of different uh, treatment options today, uh, you don't get full, uh, full um, control over your symptoms. And that's important. So it's a really room for improvements here. About 50% never gets this full uh, recovery of the symptoms. And this is a, a very serious disease that are causing, causing a lot of, uh, lot of uh, uh, troubles for, for those that uh, suffer from it. So that's why. This is a slide showing some of the, some of the important results from the first study we did in, uh, in these patients. These were newly diagnosed, very severe patients. Um, so they were treated with methotrexate. That's the normal treatment that you, you get when you are uh, diagnosed with the disease. And then we added 1189 in two different doses, 50 mg per day and 100 mg per day. And then the gray one there is the placebo, and that's only methotrexate. And as you can see here in two different very important readouts, first, the one is the C-line score, the CDAI. Uh, and what you can see here from the baseline is that the dark blue has a significant um, uh, effect. So 100 mg had a significant effect on that. The other one was the ACR20, 50, and 70 response. This is the normal regulatory response from the uh, uh, authorities in the US, the FDA. They require ACR20 uh, being significant. And please remember that this is only after four weeks of treatment in a chronic disease. Here we also got in the ACR20, we got a significant response. So these two readouts are extremely important in RA, and we got... Uh, a significance on both already after four weeks. Uh, two other uh, readouts, one of them were the so-called DAS28. Here we include uh, the acute phase protein, a biomarker in the blood called CRP, which uh, comes if you have a chronic disease in, uh, in some of the patients. And here uh, we, um, uh, we got significance as well. And as you can see on all of these, uh, all of these uh, um, results, you can see a dose response, which is very important in drug development. Lastly, but not least, we got a, a good change in the uh, fatigue score. Uh, many of those patients have a, suffers from very severe fatigue, and this is a this is a devastating symptom uh, that they do have, and we we got a good response there as well. All of them being quite. Uh, you know, uh, uh, clinically significant, which is, of course, also important. But remember, again, this is already after four weeks. So another thing was to look at the, uh, the safety uh, uh, in the trial. And most of the drugs that are used today in RA do have a lot of safety problems because they are very much... Uh, taking out the immune system or inhibiting it in, in a very high degree. Uh, so safety is important. And uh, as you can see from this slide, uh, our safety profile from the beginning was very benign. A good safety profile. Uh, no serious adverse events in this trial here. And the adverse events that we, uh, uh, that we saw uh, was uh, mild to moderate, no severe, uh, except for for two in the, uh, in the placebo group. So a good safety profile, important. So what we're doing now, and what you should be looking for in the uh, second half of this year, are readouts of two, uh, two uh, uh, trials. And the one, first one is uh, the so-called EXPAND study. It's an expansion of the begin. Exactly the same group of patients, very severe, um, and we are treating for 12 weeks now. 12 weeks, and we have uh, ACR20, as you remember, the regulatory readout from the FDA, American authorities, we have that as a primary readout. But you're also looking at quite a, quite a few other things, 
uh, in this trial. So it's a bit copy paste to begin. However, with uh, 12 weeks to see efficacy after 12 weeks to see safety after 12 weeks. So that's important. Another important trial is the uh, proof of concept in another group of patients. These are the patients that have gone through methotrexate treatment, however, uh, is still having symptoms. And then we add on 1189. And uh, we treat for four weeks on the part A of this in different uh, dosing. And we, what we're looking for here is to see if we can see an effect on these phenotype of, of patients. This is uh, quite an important study as well reading out in the second half of, of this year. So the uh, emerging profile of the um, of 1189 is really, really exciting. Once oral, uh, once daily oral dosing, a quick answer to action. We have seen that in both, uh, both trials that we have done. Uh, so this is important for the patients, obviously. High degree of efficacy. Uh, we, we can see that from both the, uh, uh, both the BEGIN study as well as the, uh, the COVID-19 study. Safe and well-tolerated, which is important, and so on and so forth. So this profile uh, can be put into the treatment concept of RA. And so far, we can say that, yes, both the quite severe patients, uh, newly diagnosed that needs uh, treatment, can be a good target for this at a very big market. But even a bigger market is the so-called uh, DMARC IR, which is uh, the uh, uh, the phase uh, phase A of the uh, uh, result uh, study that we are doing t uh, this year. This is just to say that uh, the uh, the uh, uh, newly diagnosed a very group of a big group of patients with big medical need. Uh, we have asked uh, different. Uh, uh, different key opinion leaders in the U.S. about uh, the uh, uh, the profile so far. Take-home message here is that we would love to use it. Uh, obviously, we need more results in order to substantiate the uh, the profile. But so far, it's really, really uh, uh, promising. Several new indications. My time is running out, so several new indications. Uh, we can use this as a we believe as a general inhibitor of inflammatory diseases. We see some of them on this slide here, big market opportunities, big, big uh, medical needs as well. Thank you. Where do you see the company in two years? Where do you see the company in two years? It's, I see us being even more established within inflammatory diseases. I see us uh, really building that franchise within, as I talked about a little bit today, about the resolution of inflammation. I think, you know, being a, I've been in the, uh, in the pharmaceutical industry for 30 years, I see this as an extremely exciting new field where we can go in and educate the immune system to balance, rebalance the, the disease. Uh, so I see us uh, being even more established Within, within that field. I see us also having a um, uh, 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 rather big partnership uh, because what is important for 1189, as I see it, is to have enough power to go, and I mean uh, financial power, to go into quite a few different indications because, as I said, this uh, could potentially be used quite broadly in inflammatory diseases. So even more established, we have a good pipeline, many optionalities uh, in that, but uh, I also see us having a partnership. But what does the uh, competition look like in resolution? The competition resolution, now we are focusing on melacortine receptors, and there's not a lot of competition there. There are some uh, in, in the US, uh, but they are using some, some other means in order to, to, to uh, for example, MC4 receptor has been used uh, to, uh, to treat obesity, especially in more seldom diseases within obesity, uh, with great success. Uh, so there's a company called Retin uh, that have done that very successfully on the NASDAQ stock exchange. Uh, there are also some other attempts to, to do resolution uh, therapy, 
Uh, however, they are not that as advanced as we are. Thank you, Torbjörn, for joining us today in the studio. Thank you very much.